Hey guys, you're with Easy Jeezy. This isn't a new plan format, but if you came to watch this video to learn how to fix the front end of your car from having the shimmies and shakes, I'm hoping that you'll get a few ideas here. Now, this is not full conclusive, and I was addressing a problem specifically to my car, and I had diagnosed it a few years back, and imagined that it was the tie rod end and I had I had the wrong vision of the part that I needed it's just a standard tie rod end but uh, you'll see in the video what confused me now here I've got some tie rod ends these are some examples of options that are out there I used these heavy-duty aluminum ones on an off-road car and they didn't have provision for a steering damper like this one here. You'll see that here's a here's an original one. You can see the diameter of it, and this is much stronger. And people have made them out of steel. There's uh, the old deal that you can take the sway bar and cut cut them at the bends and on the long one which is usually the one that will kink or bend you can drive the tie rod end inside there not the tie rod end the uh, the sway bar a straight piece of sway bar in there to beef this up and make it stronger um, these here are examples of the the Chinese version of tie rods and it's it when I bought these I don't know if it's still that way now I got all this stuff out because I thought I'd rob something off of one of these to fix the problem on my car and I never showed it so I'm doing it now but it was cheaper <coughs> to buy the complete tie rod with the ends than to go up here to the local uh, auto parts store brand X and buy tie rod ends individually they wanted like twenty two to twenty five dollars each and I believe I paid twenty five dollars for the complete tie rod with ends included now whether the quality is as good I don't I don't think so but you gotta be realistic about how many miles and you know <laughs> a lot of guys think oh I gotta have the old German one and I gotta have the original I I gave up on that stuff a long time ago it doesn't make any difference and those original parts as good as they were they were meant to go the long haul and nobody really drives those cars that way I just recently did a mileage check on my Baja and uh, I've put 40,000 miles on this car since I've owned it and that's a lot of driving let me tell you and most people don't drive that much in the video you'll see that I use this tool to remove my tie rod end and I'll let that speak for itself during the video I forgot that I had this tool that works just as good and it clamps uh, underneath and this is very easy as far as it's secure and it's easy on the boot you Dorman and there's other people I'm sure you can buy the new boots it seems like the boots are what's going to rot away long before the tie rod wears out and once you start getting water and dirt in there that's going to accelerate the wear so you can separate them and put the new boots on it but again look here's a here's a nice fitting boot with a nice spring on it to capture it and then look at this <laughs> got this spring on it but if you're realistic about it as long as that stays tight against the other piece it's probably good enough and you'll also see that none of these have provision for a grease zerk and so just things to look at I mentioned a pickle fork this is way too big for anything on a Volkswagen but it gives you an idea what I call a pickle fork and they do make these in different sizes and you just you get them in position and then you hammer on the end and it puts pressure and pops it but it usually destroys the boot that you're you know it means the whole thing's trash and you're going to replace the whole thing but there's many times that you may just want to loosen this up to take another component off 
Um, the steering box where the uh, idler arm, the pitman arm is, has a sharper angle built into one of them. And of course, these are right and left threads so that once you get it, you get the lock nuts loose, you can just turn this and it will either spread it apart or bring it together to adjust your toe in on your car. So I hope this little uh, introduction clarifies some questions that may come up when the video is done. And I've just, all I can tell you is I, I ended up going for a short ride and I didn't have the camera with me. And I, it, like I said in the video, about 45 miles it would start shake, rattle, and rolling. And it didn't always do it. <clears throat> I've tightened it up and uh, it is really a lot better. But the wheels are out of balance and I can feel that it's, uh, it's, it's still got a little, it's got a very tiny rattle compared to what it has. You, you feel like you could drive it that way. But if you drive a car with out of balance wheels and tires or bent rim or a problem in it, what you're doing, all that constant rattling and chattering that's going on is going to uh, accelerate the wear in all of your components, the steering box and everything else. So it's, it's really a good idea if you notice this and you don't do inspections and you don't maybe lift up your front end and grease it and grab a hold of things and pull pu and push on things occasionally that uh, you know you're gonna have you're gonna have more expensive problems <laughs> and more than one thing to fix so let's get on with the video and I hope you enjoy it on uh, another little note <laughs> It appears when I start doing the video that I've got the car supported by a floor jack under the brake drum. Uh, be certain. <laughs> I have one of these jacks underneath the beam that's carrying the weight of the car. I was only trying to uh, take some of the weight off of the drum in order to feel for uh, where I had the loose problem in a nor more normal driving position rather than have it at full droop and the tires and drums and so forth hang in there. Always be safe. Always be safe. What are you working on today, Easy? Ah, at least you're not asleep. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna have to cut back on your treats if you don't quit that. Too, much, too many carbs, I guess. This is my 66 Volkswagen, and it's got the ball joint front end. It's a great car. I'd like to put the 2110 in it. I think all I've had is the 1776s in this thing, and it runs great with that. So, at any rate, about 45, this thing gets a little shimmy in it. It seems to me I diagnosed it as a tie rod end. And I looked at this from down below, and I saw this long section. I've never had a car with a tie rod, a long tie rod, that looked like that. And for some reason, I got it in my head that I needed a tie rod in with a long extension. And I never saw them listed for a 66. So today, we're going to get to the bottom of it. They'll say the link pin went from, you know, up to 65. And then they switch to the ball joint. Anyhow, we're gonna. I'm gonna show you how I usually deal with uh, tie rod ends. I've I've got it lifted up, and it. You know, I'm not. I'm not feeling the. Of course, I got the weight of the drum on the jack, but when it was fully unloaded, I couldn't feel it either. But I don't know. So at any rate, we're gonna pop this joint. At any rate, let me get this clamp on here and. Sometimes it'll pop with just the clamp. Other times, if, if you put the clamp on it, put it in tension, and strike it this direction, I, I'd probably want to crank the wheel over here so I had some swinging room. Um, usually they'll pop. Here. We're going to take the nut off of this thing. A lot of wind blowing out there. I hope it's not. 
kind of protected here on the side of the car. It's not as hot as it would look. I've been wanting to do this for years. I'd like to put the 2110 in here, but I just, uh, it doesn't do any good to spray this with your blaster or nothing at this point. That'll only make my uh, gear puller harder to, uh, better chance of it for slipping off. So, I guess I'm going to flip this over just so I don't booger up the threads. In case the threads, in case it's not this one. Uh, I'm thinking that it was, this is what I had diagnosed as, as being the problem. This side. I'm always getting my head. <laughs> A good shot. Good shots of the back of my head. All right. Now, generally, when something's been on there as long as this is, this isn't gonna, this isn't gonna take it off. And I don't generally like those uh, pickle forks because it seems like it destroys the boot up here. And this may, if you, there's a lot of reasons that you would have to take this. Wow, look at that. Thank you. I got, I've had this tool. This is one of the first tools I bought at Sears. Man, they just don't make stuff like they used to. But at any rate, if you get that intention, sometimes by hitting it right straight on the end, you in a line with whatever, whatever the arm is that's holding whatever component it is, sometimes it's difficult to get that, then, uh, it should pop. That feels, that still feels good. Good guys, guys, I do own a chatter gun. I just don't use it often. But this is a purpose. My nuts loose or is it bolts yeah whatever <laughs> oh boeing oh gliding up feels good if it's the steering box uh, it uh has been leaking. It's all, I think all the juice leaked out. I have a spare. And I wish one of you guys could. hear that? Hey, I know I'll put you to work. If I can't see it, maybe I can film it. <laughs> yeah, okay, there it is. That's how much free play I've got in my steering wheel. So it's not these, uh, suspension components at all it's my it's my steering box so is it, 
Is it door number one, door number two, or door number three? Yeah, it moved a little bit, doggone it. Now, see if I can show that to you. All right, so here's the top of your steering box, and it's probably the original. And here's your uh, adjusting screw, and um, don't just go off what I'm showing you or say on this because I don't mess with these very often. You should really consult uh, a book on this. But what I'm going to do, oh, I've already got my wheel turned a little bit to the side. And, uh, man, this would be kind of cool if it was just a matter of adjusting. All right, so we're just gonna hold the lock nut. It's just like adjusting the valves. I'm gonna hold the lock nut. Wow, wow. That, that turned a lot. So I'm not gonna, I'm gonna back it off. I'm gonna allow myself a little clearance and I'm gonna hold it there. Now chances are, as old as this is, and the fact that it's been in this condition hasn't I'll say years but that doesn't mean a lot of miles so I'm gonna straighten my wheel oh, are you kidding me now I've got my got my wheel straight ahead and just because I haven't done this in a long time I want to loosen that lock nut a little ways now what I'm gonna do is register this in my head where it's at now and see if it tightens more it doesn't want to tighten more and it loosens immediately so, I, I know, huh, oh, this is, this is going to be sweet if, if that's all I have to do. All right, I'll put you back here on the side, and I'm reaching through the window. Oh, yeah, I don't hear that click and the wheel is moving immediately and the stern wheel is turning so we're gonna go one side to the other now okay as it as it happened I adjusted it on the side Um, you just want to make sure when you tighten that adjusting screw down or adjust it, whatever it is you're doing, you want to make sure that it doesn't bind up at some point. <clears throat> and at some point, <laughs> you just have to admit, hey, it's time for a new stern box. And uh, what do they call the arm underneath the stern box? This, is that the Pittman arm? Um, the boxes have two different sizes. They have the early and the late. And I'm not sure which year they change. This is a, the first year of the ball joint, so this may be the year they went to the bigger one. So be sure and be aware of that when you order your box. And that may be because the tie rod ends 
where they goes into the arm, the tapered part is a little bit bigger on the ball joint than the early link pins. Bigger car, bigger engine, uh, more strength. Those are the subtle things that Volkswagen always did. They they didn't, you know, just come out with another model of car. They improved the car that they had. The beams aren't interchangeable. You couldn't. You'd have to modify the head in order to get a link pin to fit. And there's probably no reason why you want these are. These are uh, the toe in and the camber is uh, all adjusted with the uh, eccentrics and on the link pin they use the link pin and they have these little spacers that are in there and it can test your patience at time and <laughs> I don't even know unless your king pins were perfect. If you took it to an alignment shop nowadays, I doubt if you'd find anybody that knew what to do. <laughs> you know, before I put this wheel back on, I want to give you guys a little uh, tech tip here. This car was troublesome um, for a long time with the brakes. The car would pull to one side or the other, the brakes would seem to get hung up and the <clears throat> when you took off it it seemed like you had like a, a a roll back device you know we we put new wheel cylinders in there we put these new uh these were new <laughs> actually my son probably put new drums on it because he i think he's the one that bought that other the rear drums and they didn't fit as well um but i had these turned and I don't remember, I think I saw some spotting from one of the brake lines. And so I thought, well, if I'm going to replace one of them, I might as well replace them both. And I put new brake lines on this thing, and it, this thing works like a new car. It works way better than those disc brakes, and they're quiet, and it just works. And the car doesn't pull side to side. Now, like I said, I had the drums turn. We'd put new wheel cylinders in there, uh, brake adjusters, uh, pads. We we did the whole the whole nine yards to it, and that never solved the problem. It's just like n nothing, and it was so annoying. But check your brake lines if your brake lines are old and cracked or if they're just old I'm not kidding you it reduces the pedal pressure and the springs will uh, squeeze the brakes back away from the drums quick and everything works the way it was meant to work and it works so good um, you probably notice these KYB now these are not the gas adjust those are white and then you've got these uh, silver ones I like on a stock body car the the white ones you'll handle better but it's a rough ride in my opinion it depends on what you want to do with your car you know with the mountains here and all the turns and stuff um, it it works just dandy and <clears throat> I got the three-quarter inch heavy-duty sway bar on this and I couldn't get those doggone stainless steel clamps that come with the urethane bushings to work for me. And I was able to stretch the clamps over them. You know, those, those things look too nice to be... They almost look like they're new. Long time ago, guys. And you know what? While we're st <laughs> thank you, thank you guys for visiting my YouTube channel, and it it encourages my brain to function. <laughs> as long as I got this thing up in the air like this, I'm gonna give these Zerks a shot. Man, this thing just looks like it's been sandblasted. It's just been sitting out here in the street for a long time. I don't drive this car as much as I should, and one of the reasons was uh, it, my son had the seats jacked up <clears throat> he put them in he's tall 
and he had them sitting on the floor and they weren't comfortable to me and they eventually wore out um, this was his car I remember when we put those uh, uh, spring adjusters in the beam boy is that a dirty nasty job but we welded in those uh, oh they got teeth on them and you jack them up like this and then you loosen the lock screws and you put an allen wrench that fits in the end of that and generally you can raise or lower this thing he liked the low look like a lot of guys do and the tires uh, would have a tendency to rub because uh, it dropped down and these are the stock size wheels and tires uh, 165 80s and uh, 15s and so I put it back where I thought it should be normal ride height so the tires wouldn't rub all the time and I could turn and things um, so it changes you know having a ball joint there's special ball joints I don't think he this has them but they articulate a little deeper when you start changing things it changes the uh, alignment it changes the Ackerman effect it changes uh, uh, the handling and if you drop the front end and get a, a an angle on it, um, I have these. Uh, gosh, I don't know where they are right now. Some caster shims that I got from Bird. You can you can loosen your beam, and you can put them out, put them behind this lower. They fit right in there. A little aluminum shims to push the lower beam out farther. And I believe you have to get longer bolts when you do that. It's only like. God, I don't know, three-eighths of an inch, maybe, something like that. Um, I don't think it's half, but it's it's enough where you need longer bolts. You just have a couple threads holding it. And, you know, basically, this is what's holding the front of your car together. Um, so, yeah, you what that does when you kick out the bottom beam at high speed it makes it a lot more stable if you're one of these racers that's getting over 100 miles an hour and stuff that will make your car uh, go in a straight line easier it almost settles in it's like having the rake on a motorcycle those uh, motorcycle the old choppers with the extended front forks and and it changed the angle they were a bearer to balance and make turns on at slow speed or go leaving a stoplight but at uh, high speed going down the road it's like you let go of the handlebars and the thing would just it would track straight and that's that's the same thing they're trying to do here uh, with those with those shims so yeah that's the the uh, the caster and then the camber is you know uh, side to side and they want it in a little bit so as you go around a corner the the tires are or the tread is gonna like bite a little bit more so yeah I'm gonna uh, wipe these zerks off and put two or three squirts in there and uh, we'll get this wheel and tire back on and uh, we'll go for a little test drive Are you my camera girl? Are you gonna hold the camera? What are we gonna do? Put a bungee cord around your belly and have you walk around with the camera? Would you let me do that? Huh? Would you let me set the camera on your back and walk around? Huh? <laughs> a dog's point of view. I wonder if she'd let me do that. <laughs> <laughs> 